Well, Razorback fans, we are live here from SEC Basketball Media Days in Birmingham, Alabama. So let's talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of Out of Balance. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday. I know that uh, the podcast is a little bit later here in the afternoon. And reason being is because I'm here at SEC Media Days. And I thought about doing it from last night and trying to put together the podcast for it. But for uh, all intents and purposes, I was like, what, what, what's, what am I going to talk about? That won't be something that I can talk about the next day, especially with all the coverage and everything for Razorback basketball being here at Media Days. So I decided to wait on it and, and hopefully everybody can forgive me. And uh, we'll be able to get to some football stuff too, uh, probably on tomorrow's podcast more so than anything. Because today I wanted to do a lot of basketball. And well, we'll have an interview actually that I had a chance to uh, catch up with Debo Davis, uh, Razorback Great, if you want to call him that, uh, which uh, was all thanks in part to, of course, being a part of uh, 1037 The Buzz and them sending me down here. So uh, some really interesting things that Devo had to say. But I, I wanted to just kind of give my thoughts and opinions on what I saw from generally speaking for Razorback basketball and some of the stuff that uh, we get to hear from Muss and the players, but also specifically just talking about uh, things kind of maybe off record, uh, things that I got to talk to Muss about and Devo and Trevin Brazil, because those were the representatives that were here for the Razorbacks. And, you know, it's, it's amazing being down here for SEC basketball media days. It's a very different format from what it is uh, compared to football, because in football, you have it last for about four days and you have all 14 teams go and it has long, long processes of coaches getting interviewed and the big room press conferences and the pomp and circumstance that goes along with it. You don't really have that in basketball on that side of things. What it's really about here is time. Just quick to the point. So you got one guy going, the next guy moves on. You got one guy going, the next guy moves on. Each and every coach goes for about 15 minutes in the main room and each and every player or two players that get brought go for 15 minutes and you get all 14 coaches in one day. So it was a, uh, a pretty insane, stressful type of uh, deal, but still overall, it was very entertaining and very enjoyable. And so getting to hear from Eric Musselman, you know, he has an expectation on him to where it, you have three straight sweet 16s in three straight years where Arkansas was a team and a program that had not made the Sweet 16 since 1996 all the way up to 2021. Like that was a long, long time. And a lot of kids didn't even realize and didn't even know what it was like to make it into the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. Yet here we are under Eric Musselman, three straight years, and you've made it only to the second weekend. In fact, basically, that's all you know for Eric Musselman because his first year postseason got canceled due to COVID. So anytime that Eric Musselman's made it to postseason, He's always gone to the second weekend at minimum eight and three in the last three seasons. So the expectation has been put forth that every single year, Arkansas is going to be a team that not only competes in the sec competes for an sec regular season title, uh, sec tournament title, maybe, uh, although those things aren't as important, but especially getting into March madness and in the NCAA tournament, that's the expectation. And just as we know, I think Nolan Richardson, the uh, all-time great Razorback basketball coach, coined it best. Whenever you create a monster, you got to be able to feed it. And now that the monster has been created by Eric Musselman, it's got to be fed. And I started thinking about just the success in postseason that Arkansas has had and how much fun it's been and how electric it's been and how, uh, you know, beating Gonzaga, number one overall seed, beating Kansas, another number one overall seed, beating these teams that are really good and have a, a lot of great talent and great, great players and everything, but Arkansas going up against them, these Goliaths, if you will, and taking care of business, it, it's interesting because it's like you wonder, and I think I, I was even talking to some other people here from uh, the media in SEC, and I had a few people ask me, it's like, what is it about Muss and Arkansas teams that do well in the NCAA tournament? Like, what is it? Is it uh, the way that he approaches the game? Is it schematics? Is it luck? Is it coincidence? You know, what is it? And 
I know Mus has kind of gone into it a few times and discussed it in length about what he has as an expectation and some of the things that he does throughout the NCAA tournament that makes it get to that point. I think even uh, he said in his press conference, and or maybe it was the interview that we had with him, either way, he talked about the balance of focus and relaxation. Focus and relaxation. Making sure that each and every one of the players do not feel that pressure that is on them. Make sure that they understand that there's not this uh, unconscionable and unattainable goal of being able to win a game. Knowing that the biggest and brightest lights are on you. Knowing that everyone in the country is watching you. Knowing everyone is betting on you or betting against you. You know, filling out brackets. That's the thing about, that's great about the NCAA tournament is no matter what, uh, you have people that will play and follow the NCAA tournament simply because of the fact that it's there. Like they don't watch basketball throughout the regular season, but they love the NCAA tournament. And so you know that everyone's going to be on you, but the pressure that gets put on you as players, you can't feel it because the second you feel it, the second you're going to crumble, or at least most players and a lot of players at the college level will crumble. It's one thing to be an NBA player and to feel that because you feel it all the time. They're professionals. But at the end of the day, a lot of these kids are just 18, 19, 20 years old. And having that many people watch them and watch them intently and knowing that it's one, win or go home, one game, and that's it, the pressure gets to him a lot. And so Musk goes through his formula of talking about how important that is to make sure that they don't feel the pressure, but also on top of that, keep them focused, focused in on what the task is at hand, because you can't run from what is actually happening as much as you'd like to say, well, you know, you just don't worry about it. Don't look at it that way. Look at it some other way. Yeah, as easy as it is to say, it's still at the end of the day, a big deal. And it's the biggest moment and the biggest games that they'll ever experience at the college level. And so the balancing act of doing that, I think, it, it is more so than anything. It's a mentality. And to win in the NCAA tournament, it's more of a mentality. How many times do we see the most talented teams, the best teams in the NCAA tournament, not win the championship? Almost every year. Almost every year, the most talented and well-respected team almost never wins. It's weird. But... When you have some teams that have veterans, for instance, experienced guys, seniors that have been around a long time, those usually end up being the teams that can have the most success because either one, they're used to it, two, they're grown adult men that know how to handle all the pressures and drama, or three, they are just in a, in a position to where they're well coached and they have a great culture and they don't let this moment be too big for them because they don't know anything different. There, there's a lot of ways to handle it. But Mus has found a key ingredient with his team. And knowing that in the SEC, it's tough to win in this conference. It's tough to win games no matter what, no matter what conference you're in. It's tough to win games on the road. It's tough to be able to be a team that has the success on the road, whatever it is. It's tough. But for Arkansas's sake, they know that they are always going to have a team that has talent, that has mental toughness, that has great defense, and has a passion and intensity to them that's going to make them successful. This has now been a built brand, if you will, of basketball. Like nobody else wants to have any other excuses, and nor should there be any excuses. Arkansas needs to continue to win. But what the scary thing is, and I was actually talking about this with Curtis Wilkerson of hogsports.com because we drove down here together. What the scariest thing is, is when you look at Arkansas and seeing what they've accomplished, which is great. Like, don't get me wrong. It's been awesome. It's been great. It's cool. But you feel like at some point in time, there's going to be a year where they lose in the first round of the NCAA tournament or the second round of the NCAA tournament. Like, it, it just feels that way because that is the NCAA tournament in general. You know how many times, like, you think Kentucky expected to lose to St. Peter's? No. Like, it, you think that, you know, Purdue last year wanted to lose as a, as a one seed to a 16 seed? No. They don't plan on it, and nor does it happen that often, but it's tough. It's tough to win in the NCAA tournament. But, that's what you have with a coach and must in this team in Arkansas is that's the standard. That's the expectation. They have a formula, they have a recipe and it's working. Can it work again this year? I think so. With the amount of veteran leaders that they have guys that are bona fide dudes, guys that can score guys that can put a, a lot of things together. Like they got it all. Trevin Brazil is a bona fide all sec player. It could be, I mean, if everything went really well, he could be in an NBA lottery pick. If he really had a big year, you know, you got a seasoned dude like, like Devo Davis, who's been in the NCAA tournament. It's also an eight and three in his NCAA tournament games. You got L Ellis, who's a great guard with experience who scored a lot of points. You got Khalif battle who 
if you look at some of the odds in Vegas, he's the only player that you can bet on to win the Wooden Award on Arkansas because he's that great of a scorer. You think about Jeremiah Davenport and, and kind of the swagger that he brings. Tremont Mark, a great defensive player from Houston. You have pieces, you have guys, you have dudes, you got a coach, you got a culture, you got games, you got atmospheres, you got it all. But can the monster continue to get fed? Can this team continue to get better and better? And when it matters the most, step up big. They're going to lose games this year. They're going to have frustrations this year. They're going to lose games that they shouldn't lose this year. They're going to have bad shooting nights. They're going to have those things. But can they be the team that consistently brings it and is competitive and that everyone has to watch out for? And when it matters the most in March, can they still be that team that makes it to the Sweet 16 and beyond? They have what it takes. They got it all. They just got to go execute it once again. And it's great to have it back. Uh, We'll have a chance to catch up with Devo Davis here in just a little bit, Razorback Guard. But first, I got to tell you about Jace Medical, folks. As we know, uh, they offer so many different things when it comes to helping us in unprepared situations and emergencies and things that we may not be prepared for, that we should be prepared for, but we get caught in the act and it just ends up being a problem for us. But now they offer custom customization for your Jace case with dozens of add-on medications. You can choose from the medications that best fit you and your family and their unique needs. Jace is continually working to expand their medication offerings. In those recent efforts, they added ivermectin as an option in the Jace case itself. Another great thing about it is they have gift cards too that can be offered. So if you buy a gift card for a family or your loved ones, you can put it into the Jace case and they can invest into it on their own as well. So just go to jacemedical.com, enter in promo code Locked on at checkout for a $20 discount. That's promo code locked on and for a $20 discount on your order. Just head over to jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. Promo code locked on for $20 off. I also want to tell you all about FanDuel and how this episode is brought to you by those great people over at FanDuel where the NFL season is in full swing. And right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time than now to get in on the action. And the app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on, kick off the NFL season, and really get it going with not only the NFL and for college football, but FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, I uh, had a chance to catch up with Devo Davis today, Razorback guard. And, you know, it's always fun to catch up with Devo, a guy that has been around Arkansas for a long time, had a lot of success. He's preseason all SEC second team for the basketball team, and rightfully so. Um, he, does, he doesn't back down from anybody. Uh, March Devo, as he's referred to, because he always plays his best in March. Uh, it's always cool just to catch up with him and to talk with him about everything. And we had a chance to do it once again today uh, here at SEC Media Day. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hear from Devo Davis and what he expects out of his Razorback basketball team this season. All right, I'm here with Devo Davis, a Razorback senior guard. Devo, it's good to have you back, man. How are you just feeling to get the season going? Uh, I feel good, and I know I'm not the only one that feels good. I think um, the team feels good. The coaches are ready to play, um, and I, I know I'm ready to play because we're tired of playing against each other at practice, beating up on each other. So um, I feel good, and I'm really excited. Got a game coming up, and so that's the best part about this week. So how do you approach now as a senior? Exhibition games, I know there's still games, still want to win, still want to compete, but just what's the approach uh, about about that and also playing it this early in the season it seems like it's a little bit earlier than usual yeah um like like any other game uh, we're going to prepare to win and i think we're ready um, to go into friday ready to win and dominate how we want to play every other game and and not just my preparation but our team preparation has been really good and that's one thing i can say um we got an older group of guys that's going to really help us um throughout the season um as long as everyone continues to stay healthy and things like that everything's just just falling place and overall I think we're ready. 
So you've been obviously on a lot of different teams for Arkansas. It seems like there's new faces all the time. But what are some of the, the differences, advantages, disadvantages, whatever it is, between having a team like you did last year, a lot of younger guys, but this year seems like nothing but upperclassmen across the board. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and not saying that um, both teams aren't talented because both teams are very talented just in different ways. And um, just from last year, you have a lot of younger guys that haven't played the college game but has played really high level high school. And so um, I think it's, it, it's, it's, it's different just knowing that they come from two different competitive levels. But mentally and physically, the younger guys may hold up a little longer, you know, or, or the older guys may break down. So we just want to look and make sure we're taking care of our bodies and things like that. But with the older guys, um, like I said, knowledge and, and being in college already is really helping us because they're catching on to schemes and things like that very quickly. And that's what we need. So we continue to put things in. So we're not just ready for the first exhibition game. We can be ready for down the road, you know? Yeah. And then also you've been named to preseason all SEC second team. Just uh, what, what does that mean to you? And just uh, obviously you want to finish the season all yeah, SEC, sure. but just uh, the honor that it is for having the preseason award like that. Oh uh, yeah. It's, it's exciting. And I'm blessed and um, I can't do it without God and, and not only the coaches and the team, but my family, them all putting me in the position to where I am now. But without without the preseason, um, what would they call it, you know? And so, I mean, it's preseason. It, it, it counts, but it don't count. And like you said, it's really one of what you want at the end of the season, man. And I think I can get on that first team uh, at the end of the season. And once, once everybody see what I, I've been working on. Well, I know you got an exhibition game coming up, but just out of curiosity, you got Purdue, mm -hmm. number three team in the country coming into Bud Walton as an exhibition game. Just what is that going to be like? Now, because I feel like everyone there is going to feel like it's a real game and you're going to have the crowd there and everything. But playing a high-end opponent like that so early in the season in a game that is an exhibition, just what are some of the things you can take away from a game like that? Uh, just just going into that game prepared. Um, we know we're playing a, a really good team. We know it doesn't count. We know it's an exhibition game and we know it's going to be packed. So you know, it's just like a, a, another regular SEC road game or a home game, as I can say. Um, we got a, a huge, huge um, opponent in front of us and I think we just got to be ready mentally and physically to be ready to play go out there and, and know that we can win the game and, and know that we're playing against Purdue it's gonna really be a, a really good team a really hard fall game and so we got to be, be able to go out there and just fight hard and play and, and do what we need to do and go over our blue our blueprint so that we're able to prepare and be ready Last one for what you get out of here. Everyone calls you March Devo because mm -hmm. you're 8-3 and 3 and it's NCAA tournament teams. I mean, that's an incredible feat. But what is it about you and your ability and the team just and must and everything where once March Madness gets here, that's when you guys are playing your best. That's when you guys put it together because I think the second team in the same stretch has only had like four at NCAA tournament. When you guys got eight, right. what's the key to that success in postseason? Just just being able to uh, stay focused, stay focused on this long season, you know what I mean? And so as you stay focused throughout the entire season and, and make sure that your head is on level and, and not just an individual standpoint, from a team standpoint, you want to make sure everyone is um, like locked in and you know what I mean, like a link. And, and I think that's where we be at that point of the season. And, and, uh, and like you said, we have eight wins in, the, in March Madness in the last few years. And, and we're consistent with the same thing. And I, as long as we stay consistent, I think we can continue to make history, not only for um, this group or the Arkansas program, but uh, NCAA history, you know what I mean? And uh, that's, what, that's all we want, just continue to make history and continue to just get better as a collective group and as a university. Steve-O Davis, Razorback Guard. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Thank All you. right. Yes, no problem. All right, man. All right, that was Devo Davis of the Arkansas Razorbacks joining us here on the podcast. And uh, I got to tell you all, though, that uh, as great as it is to to be here, of course, into SEC Media Days, which I guess it's SEC tip-off, SEC Media Days, it doesn't really matter, but you know what I'm talking about. I got to tell you, though, about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speeds, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. So with all the parts you need at all the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into an MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. 
Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, again, we're, we've been talking all basketball, and I'm going to end on basketball. We'll do. We'll get back to football tomorrow because I know all you Razorback fans are so much dying to talk about ba- uh, football right now, being two and five. But that's okay. Uh, we'll do a little Mississippi State previewing. But you know, I wanted to bring this up too with basketball and the predicted order of finish for the uh, SEC and how it was predicted by the media. Uh, we know that Devo Davis was all SEC second team. Tre- Trevin Brazil was uh, first team all SEC. But the order of finish has Arkansas at number three, Tennessee at number one, Texas A&M at number two, and Arkansas at number three. Now, what does that actually mean? Who knows? Because Arkansas was picked to finish number two last year, and we know that they didn't. They finished tenth. So it, it, it like it just goes to show you just how little uh, all in the media know. Which I'm in the media, and it's not an insult or anything. It's just these teams are always different each and every year. And there's new players, there's new coaches, there's just so much newness about it all. It's always hard to say who's going to finish at the top. You may have a ballpark estimate, but honestly, knowing what Arkansas has and knowing where they're at, I think three is fair. Uh, I think that uh, you know Tennessee definitely has a lot of experience for them, and picking them number one makes sense. A and M for sure, and they even have the SEC Player of the Year, preseason Player of the Year of Wade Taylor the fourth coming back. But I don't know. Like A and M is still one of those teams to where because of how they play, it might be. Interesting to see if they are able to replicate what they did a year ago. Uh, they and I'm actually I kind of probably mean this with a little disrespect. Uh, I mean they just win with offensive rebounds and free throw shooting. It's it's kind of boring basketball to watch, but it wins. So yeah, they could be into the mix. But I'm telling you right now, between Arkansas, Kentucky, Alabama, especially that three four five spot could go anywhere. Anywhere, like I think even the top five could ha- go anywhere. Uh, I don't think Alabama is going to finish first. They, they'll be up there. And, you know, Kentucky has a bunch of talented freshmen. So, you know, if they put it together, they could be the best team in the SEC. But as we know, with Kentucky and Calipari, it it hasn't really gone according to plan a lot of times. So that could be something. Um, You know, Auburn's at six. There'll be a tournament team. Like, all these are tournament teams, too. So it's not like I'm saying they're going to be trash. Mississippi State is at seventh tournament team. Florida at eight, I thought, was pretty interesting. You know, they weren't a great team last year. uh, Castleton, I think it was his name, got injured a good bit last year, too. So, you know, maybe they bounce back, but Missouri at nine, I felt like that was pretty low. Ole Miss at 10 is going to be the interesting one because Ole Miss with Chris Beard, I think that they're going to be relevant. Uh, you know, say what you want about him, but he's, he's a great coach. And because of the transfer portal and, and because of his abilities, I think there'll be a tournament team this year and they're going to be a team that nobody wants to play because they're always going to be tough. Vanderbilt at number 11, Georgia at number 12, LSU at 13 and South Carolina at 14. So. Uh, but again, I didn't have any issue with where the, the order of finish was for Arkansas or for really any other teams. I didn't think anyone was too high. I didn't think anyone was too low. It's just hard to predict. In fact, you can make an argument that in all SEC sports, especially when it comes to the big ones of football and basketball and baseball, I think basketball is probably the most difficult to have a preseason prediction because in baseball, at least most of the time, yeah, you got transfer portals, but you have three-year players more often than not. Uh, guys that you've already seen last year and you, you see this upcoming, you're same in football. You know, the portal has really opened it up, but you kind of have an idea. Well, you know, Bama's going to be Bama. Georgia's going to be Georgia. Uh, you know those things. But in basketball, man, who knows? Who knows what this going to look like? Who knows what it's going to be like? Uh, I just know it's going to be great. And just nice to have SEC basketball being relevant, too, in the grand scheme of things, where for so many years it wasn't. So I enjoy that part of it, too. But it's been so fun to, to cover, and I know it's going to be another great year to cover once again. But appreciate everybody listening into the Locked on Razor Rex podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. And we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.